Good morning, everyone. Our topic is linear kinematics. So let's start with some basic formula we will use today. The main formula definitions. Uh, uh, we have some first formula is about uh, average velocity. Average velocity is uh, change in coordinate, x final coordinate, uh, change in coordinate divided by change in, in time. So final coordinate minus initial coordinate divided by final time minus initial time. So this is the definition of average velocity. So to, we, we are going to consider one dimensional motion. One dimensional motion means motion along the straight line. So only one line, for example, x axis, we have x axis and directed to the rightward. We have origin, we have, uh, we can measure the coordinate of the body on this x coordinate system. And x final is the final position of, of a body. x initial is initial position. This is final time and initial time. For example, if initially body um, was at this point, this coordinate x initial, and then after some time, it's moved to another coordinate, for example, to, to here, then, this position is x final and this position is x initial. This is definition of average velocity and uh, next formula is the instantaneous velocity. What is instantaneous velocity? Instantaneous velocity is, definition is um, d, dx or dt. So the, the derivative from coordinate with respect to time. And derivative means, as the definition of derivative means uh, limit when, uh, limit when, when delta t goes to zero, t goes to zero, tends to zero. So this is limit when t tends to zero. Delta x over delta t. this limit. So the same thing, but uh, when t final and t initial are very close to each other, for example, next position is, the final position is very close to the initial position here. Then you can measure um, velocity when the distance is very small and time is very small. Because during this very small time, velocity doesn't change. We assume that velocity doesn't change during very short time. And that's why we can use this definition of instantaneous velocity. So if, if you know the coordinate, you can find velocity. Let's solve some example problem. Here, uh, test number eight. The coordinate of a particle in meters is given by xt 16t minus 3t t cube. Whereas the time t is in seconds, the particle is momentarily at rest at t. So, 
this coordinate is given, then you should find uh, when velocity is zero, at what time velocity is zero. To solve this, this test, uh, we should first find the velocity by taking derivative from coordinate. Let's do that. So this is a question. Now this is, uh, let's say this is test number one. Let's find velocity by taking derivative. So velocity is dx over dt, time derivative from coordinate. I think everybody of you know the calculus, how to take derivatives, how to take uh, integrals, and how to solve differential equations, am I right? Okay, I guess you, you, you know this. If you don't know, um, after this lesson, please try to repeat in the calculus, um, mathematical analysis, and you can remember how to take derivatives. So we have uh, the function x as uh, 16t plus 3t cube. This is our function we have to take derivative from this function. 16t gives you 16 minus 3t cubed gives you uh, 9t square. This is the der derivative of this function. Now the question is, the particle is at rest at what time t? At rest means velocity is zero, so we can we should put v equal to zero and solve this equation. This is quadratic equation, and solving this quadratic equation gives you t <coughs> t equals square root sixteen over nine. or it's four over three. This is the answer. <clears throat> now let's check uh, four over three is 1.33 uh, approximately. <clears throat> the answer is 1.3 seconds approximately. Answer is B. Is there any questions? Uh, V equal to V null plus A. Can you take away that formula essentially, isn't it? Yok, yok. Bu formula bu yerde işlem iyiydi. V ting, ben bunu neyi yapsam ağzı. V ting, V null plus A t kvadrat. Taksim iki, A t digen formula var idi. Kinematika da. Bu formula kaçan doğru? Bu formula uh, a constant book in the door. This is any acceleration. When acceleration is constant, this formula is correct. But when acceleration is not constant, you should use this formula dx over dt. This formula is more general. V equal dx over dt is more general formula. This formula is a special case. So how, how, how do I know that acceleration is not constant? So in this case, you are talking about if uh, V equal to V0 plus AT, then uh, in this case, X, X equal to X0 plus 
uh, V0T plus AT square over 2. You see that X depends on on uh, second degree poly polynomial of time, square of the time, T square T, and this is uh, free term. So this is T square, but here in our problem it's T cube. That means we have additional term plus um, B T cube. Now this is not uh, this is not uh, linear uh, uniformly accelerated motion. This is uniformly accelerated motion. Uniformly accelerated motion. Why uniformly accelerated? Because acceleration is constant. How, how to check uh, what kind of motion is this? This is not, not uniformly accelerated. Uniform accelerated motion, <coughs> motion beginning. Takes this and it 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 takes this Oh, okay, we can we can uh, prove this formula by using this uh, definition of velocity. But generally, you should use v equal to dx over dt. In every problem, you should use this formula: v equal dx over dt. Other questions? No other questions? Okay. Then let's move to another definition. Uh, let's define what is acceleration. Acceleration is, average acceleration is uh, change in velocity divided by change in time. So this is delta, delta V over delta T. change in velocity divided by change in time. What does it mean? It means that final velocity minus initial velocity divided by final time minus initial time. This is the definition of average acceleration. So let's imagine that here in, in, in our picture, in, our, in this picture, Let's copy this picture again here. In this picture, uh, we have two positions, initial and final. And that's why if uh, velocity changed during the motion, then we have two, two velocities, initial velocity and final velocity. Let's say that uh, we have initial velocity here, here we have initial velocity and here we have final velocity. This is final, this is V initial, this is V final. Then, then you should take the difference of these velocities and divide it by time interval between, between these two positions. For example, at this position is 10 o'clock, at this position 10, 20, uh, 10, 20, for example. Then it takes 20 minutes between these two points. Difference is 20 minutes. You should convert it to seconds. 20 minutes means um, 100, 1,200 um, seconds, for example. Uh, another definition is instantaneous acceleration. Instantaneous acceleration is 
is limit when t tends to zero, delta t tends to zero, this is delta t tends to zero. In this case also, it's delta t, it's delta t. Delta t means t final means minus t initial. Delta t tends to zero. Uh, delta v over delta t. Delta v over delta t. This is definition of uh, instantaneous acceleration. When acceleration changes with time, as I as I show in this um, first test, if acceleration changes with time, then it's better to define instantaneous acceleration. Acceleration at that instant of time. So that means acceleration can, can be changed during the motion. And then uh, we can define acceleration by using delta V over delta T. This is instantaneous acceleration. And this is definition of derivative, dv over dt. Time derivative with respect to velocity. Okay, let's find uh, acceleration in this problem. Acceleration A is dv over dt. Let's take derivative and derivative from this uh, function. Let's take this derivative. You get uh, 16 gives you 0. And minus 9 t squared gives you minus 18 t. You see that acceleration here is uh, minus 18 t. Change this time as minus 18 t. Acceleration is not constant. That's why it's not uniformly accelerated motion. Because it depends on time. Okay, let's see another example problem. Example uh, number nine. A drug racing car starts from rest at t equal to zero and moves along a straight line with velocity given by v equal to bt square, where b is constant. The expression for the distance traveled by this car from its position at t equal to zero is. So here velocity is given and you should find the distance traveled. That means you should find coordinate x. This is prob problem number two for today. So this is b t square, b t square. Now the problem is is different. Here uh, we have coordinate and we found velocity, but now it's inverse problem. Inverse problem means velocity is is not is given and you should find coordinate. The inverse. So if uh, <coughs> usually if coordinate is given, x coordinate as a function of t is given, by taking derivative, <coughs> taking derivative, you get v of t. 
velocity as a function of time. And again, taking one more derivative, you get acceleration, instantaneous acceleration, a as a function of t. But in the, this is direct problem. This is direct problem. And we have inverse problem. Inverse problem is acceleration is given a as a function of t is given. Then what is the inverse of derivative? Can you please answer what is the inverse of derivative? Inverse of derivative is integral. By integrating, you can get velocity as a function of t instantaneous velocity as a function of time and integrating one more time integrating one more time you get coordinate as a function of time this is called inverse problem inverse problem okay now our second, uh, first problem was direct problem. We found uh, V by, uh, by taking derivative from X. And the second problem is inverse problem. We are going to find uh, uh, X by knowing V. So this part, this part. Okay, let's do that. We have formula for V, V, v of t is equal to b t square. So b is some constant. We assume that we know this constant b. And uh, let's write that acceleration is, um, or, or coordinate is, uh, velocity is dx or dt. And from here, you can find that dx is v dt. So x dx is v dt. This is called differential. And let's integrate this uh, dx v dt from both sides, from left side and from right side. So integral dx equal to integral v dt. So we are going to integrate from both sides. If this is indefinite integral without limits, upper and lower limits, this is called indefinite integral, we should add here constant, some constant. If this is a definite integ integral, then you should put limits. So this is indefinite integral. You can do the bo both ways are correct. You can do indefinite integration. You can do definite integration. If you if you write definite integral, then you should put here limits. For example, uh, <coughs> x changes from initial x to final x. Limits of integration over x is x fi uh, initial and x final. X zero. Let's call it x zero initial coordinate and final coordinate is x. <coughs> These are integration limits. And for um, time, so here is integration over time. Time also changes from initial time to final time. So limits of integration are t0 and t. Both ways are correct, but if you do in the first way with constant, then at the end you should find this constant. Uh, in this case, in this method, second method, you should know initial coordinate and initial time. Usually we assume that if it's not given in the definition of the problem, 
initial time is zero and initial coordinate is zero. T zero is equal to zero and X zero, if it's not given, you can assume that initial coordinate is at the origin. X zero is equal to zero. Let's do that. Then the first integral on the left gives you X x minus x0 because x0 is 0 it gives you x and we should integrate this function bt square let's integrate this function so here we have integral v dt we substitute v equal to bt square v equal to bt square. Then if you know how to integrate, then you can solve this integral. It gives you bt cube over, over three. bt cube over three. And you should also take into account integration limits, but okay, let's put integration limits. Limits are T0 and T. From T0 to T. But if T equal to zero, T0 equal to zero, initial time is zero, then the answer will be BT cube over three. This is final result. So x0 is also 0. The final result is x equal to bt cube over 3. Let's check bt cube over 3 is answer b. Answer b is correct. Is there any questions? We have uh, eight minutes to to end of this conference then uh, we plan it for one hour we have uh, half a, ha, uh, half an hour after the ending this conference i i share you another link to new conference and then we finish at uh, 10 30. is there any questions concerning uh, these two problems If no questions, let's move to the next problem. <clears throat> Number tw uh, tw uh, 12. The velocity of an object is given as a function of uh, time by v equal to 4t minus 3t square, where v is in meter per second and t is in seconds. Its average velocity over the interval from t0 to, to t equal to 2 seconds. So velocity is given as a function of time as shown here. And we should find the average velocity. This is simple question. Let's learn how to find average velocity by using this definition of average velocity, x final minus x initial divided by t final minus t initial. This is number, number three, problem number three. This is 4t minus 3t square. So average velocity V is equal to, oh, let's copy this, let's copy. This is average velocity 
and so we need final coordinate initial coordinate we have final time is two seconds and initial time is zero but we need coordinates we have velocity how to find coordinate from velocity we look at the, this our diagram to find the coordinate um, by knowing velocity we have to integrate so from v to x we have to integrate okay let's integrate uh, this function how to integrate i'll show you once again so we have v equal to We have v equal to dx over dt and we, dx is v dt and integral dx is equal to integral v dt. Okay, let's show here now from this method, from indefinite integral method for your information. Let's take indefinite integral. Indefinite integral from dx give, uh, gives you x. Indefinite integral from 4t gives you uh, 4t square over 2. That means 2t square minus 3 minus 3t three square integra integral of minus 3t square gives you minus 3t uh, cube over 3. 3t cube over 3 plus constant because don't forget about this constant because we are taking indefinite integral then by simply simplifying this expression it gives you uh, 2t square minus t cube. I simplify these factors plus constant. Now constant is unknown. How to find this constant? We use initial condition. So we assume that initial coordinate is zero. If it's not given in the definition of the problem, what is initial coordinate, then we, we assume that at t equal to zero, x zero equal to zero. So at t equal to zero, x zero equal to zero. Let's use that. Let's put t equal to zero here and here and x equal to zero here. Then you can immediately solve this equation that constant is zero. You can check this, but I'll write just the answer, constant equal to zero. So when you put t equal to zero to here, you get zero minus zero plus constant equal to zero, x equal to zero. That means constant is zero. This, the meaning of this constant is initial coordinate here, because we are Finding coordinate, and this constant is initial coordinate. Initial coordinate is zero. Then, <coughs> answer for x is, x is two t square plus t minus t cube. Now, we are going to find average, uh, average velocity. We need final, coordinate and initial coordinate. Let's find final coordinate and initial coordinate by knowing final initial time and final time. So initial coordinate is already found is equal to zero. And final coordinate, we, we should put t equal to two seconds. Let's put t equal to two seconds. This is final coordinate. We put here two seconds. Two square is four, eight, eight minus 
8. Again, 0. You see, uh, in this motion, body moves along the coordinate and in final at after two seconds is its return to its original position that that means displacement is zero displacement is zero no displacement that means average velocity is zero because if you put now here <coughs> Final coordinate is zero, minus initial coordinate is zero, and final time t two, initial time is zero. We get zero. Average velocity is zero. So let's see the answer. Answer is zero. So average velocity is zero. you have any questions? No questions? Let's solve this problem. The coordinate of an object is given as a function of time by x. We should find its average acceleration again. Now the problem number four. So x is 4t square minus 3t cube. And we should find average acceleration. So again, we, uh, we, we can use the formula of average acceleration given here. So this is formula for average acceleration. We need final velocity, initial velocity, final time, initial time. Initial time is zero, final time is two. Now we should find velocity. How to find velocity from coordinate? Here is formula how to find velocity from coordinate. This is formula for velocity. So we should take derivative from this function. This is 8t minus 9t square. 8t minus 9t square is velocity. Now Initial velocity when t equal to zero, if we put t equal to zero, v becomes zero. Initial velocity is zero. If we put t equal to two, then we get 16 minus um, so, uh, 16. Okay. Final velocity is when we put t equal to 2, we get minus 20. This is final velocity, meters per second. because x in meters and t in seconds. And then average acceleration is final velocity minus 20, minus initial velocity minus zero, final time two, initial time zero. We get minus 10 meters per second 
square because it's acceleration. So answer is minus 10 meters per second square. Answer is C, minus 10 meters per second square. Now let's try to solve uh, this problem by yourself. Each of four particles move along x-axis. Their coordinates in meters as a function of time in seconds are given by, by this. Particle one, 3.5 minus 2.7 T cube. So its coordinate x is given. Which of these particles have constant acceleration? You should find uh, velocity by taking derivative from this function and by taking derivative one more time you should find uh, acceleration. What is acceleration? So you should take two times the derivative. When you take derivative from... from hmm? Well, John, do you have any answer? No? Okay, this will be your homework. The answer is D, only three and four, but you should show this. If you don't know how to take derivatives, please repeat the mathematical analysis and uh, learn how to take derivatives. Okay, let's uh, see some theoretical questions because in your exam there will be a theoretical questions too. Number 17. Of the following situations, which one is impossible? A body having velocity east and acceleration east. Is it possible? Yes, velocity body can have velocity towards east and acceleration toward east. It's possible. B, a body having velocity east and acceleration west. It's also possible. So velocity and acceleration can have different directions. C, a body having zero velocity and non-zero acceleration. So the velocity can be zero and acceleration can be non-zero. For example, when you drop the body, the free-falling free body at initial time, it has no velocity, but it has acceleration G 9.8. It's also possible. D, a body having constant acceleration and variable velocity. So acceleration can be constant and velocity can be variable. The same example of free falling body. So velocity increases with time, but acceleration is constant, 9.8. It's also possible. And the last one, a body having constant velocity and variable acceleration. So if, if a body ha has acceleration, variable or not, velocity is, will not be constant. If the body has an acceleration, velocity changes. It's not constant. So this is impossible. Is it clear? Constant is not constant. Constant is not constant. I will tell you that I will tell you that I will tell you that I will tell you Yani, jism tezligi özgürmez bu kalıp, tezleniş ki ilgi bolşu mümkün mes. Tezleniş bu se, tezlik abizatil ne özgürdü. Eğer tezleniş bu se, tezlik özgürdü. Bu yerde itilgen ki, tezlik özgürmez, tezlenişi özgür uçu değil yap. Demek tezleniş bu se, bu tezlik özgürmez bol amidi. Demek bu mümkün mes. So next one, uh, 
throughout a time interval while the speed of a particle increases as it moves along the x-axis its velocity and acceleration might be they make jism ning tezligi zarrachaning tezligi uni harakati davomida oshgan ekan x o'qi bo'yicha harakatlanganda uning tezligi va tezlanishi qanday bo'lishi mumkin degan savol qo'yilgan a positive and and negative respectively demak mos ravishda tezligi musbat tezlanishi manfiy Bunaqa bo'lishi mumkin. So the velocity can be positive and acceleration can be negative. For example, uh, if you if you uh, throw a body vertically up. So velocity is positive because y axis directed up and velocity directed up upwards. But acceleration g acceleration due to gravity has direction down that's why it's negative so it's possible b negative and positive so velocity is negative acceleration is positive this is also possible for example uh, velocity negative and acceleration positive means when y axis directed downwards and the body thrown vertically up they make y oqi pastga yo'naltirilgan bo'lsa tezlanish g erkin tushish tezlanishi g pastga yo'nalgan bo'ladi demak pastga yo'nalgan tezlanish musbat bo'ladi x y oqi bo'yicha bir xil yo'nalgan bo'lsa bu musbat tezlanish bo'ladi tepaga yo'nalgan tezlik mana tepaga otilgan jismning tezligi tepaga yo'nalgan bo'ladi bu manfiy bo'ladi bu ham bo'lishi mumkin c negative and negative respectively demak tezlik ham manfiy tezlanish ham manfiy bo'lishi mumkinmi demak tezlanish ham manfiy tezlik ham manfiy bu degani Bunga hozir misol topa olmayapman. Demak, bu bo'lishi mumkin emas. O'ylab ko'ringlarcha, bu shunaqa bo'lishi mumkinmi? Tezlik ham, tezlanish ham manfiy bo'lishi mumkinmi? Integral bilan tushuntirsa ham bo'ladi-da buni. Integral bilan ham tushuntirsa bo'ladi, to'g'ri. Musbat manfiyligini. Unga topsa bo'ladi. Integral bilan qanaqa tushuntiramiz mana shuni. Olim aka, ideya bering chiqani. Demak, integral. Demak, bizda tezlanish manfiy chiqishi kerak. Nu, boyagina mulohazalarga qarasa, there were five. So, if is negative Ha, mana. Bu aytyaptiki, a particle increases as it moves up. The speed of a particle increases as it moves along the x-axis deyapti. Ya'ni tezligi oshyapti. Tezligi oshsa, mana tezlanish 0 dan kichkina bo'lsa, tezligi ham 0 dan kichkina bo'lsa, bu tezlik oshmaydi-da. Chunki bu tezlanish manfiy bo'lgani uchun bu tezlik kamayadi. Tezlikni o'zi manfiy bo'lgani uchun bu tezlik oshmaydi. Demak, bu bu noto'g'ri. Bunaqa bo'lishi mumkin emas. To'g'rimi? Okay. Number 19. We have three minutes left, so uh, this is this will be our last last test for today. A particle moves on on the x-axis 
when its acceleration is positive and increasing. Demek zarracha x oqi bo'ylab harakatlanyapti. Uning tezlanishi musbat va oshadigan vaqtni toping. Yoki qaysi javobda tezlanishi musbat va oshadigan javobni topish kerak. Demak, tezlanish musbat va oshish kerak. A its velocity must be positive. Unga bog'liq emas. Demak, bu tezligi musbat bo'lishiga bog'liq emas tezlanish. Its velocity must be negative. Demak, aytganimdek, tezlanish tezlikka bog'liq emas. Buni dinamikani tushuntirganda tushunasizlar, tezlanish faqat kuchlarga bog'liq. Tezlikka bog'liq emas. It must be slowing down. Acceleration positive and increasing bo'lsa, bu sekinlashmaydi. Ya'ni tezlanish musbat va oshayotgan bo'lsa, jism sekinlashmaydi. Bu ham noto'g'ri. It must be speeding up. Bu to'g'ri lekin it must be speeding up. Uni tezligi oshish kerak. Bu yerda javob noto'g'ri bo'lsa kerak. Tezlanish musbat bo'lsa, jism x o'qi bo'ylab harakatlanayotgan bo'lsa, o'ylab ko'ringlarchi, balkim men hozir adashayotgandirman. Yana bir o'ylab ko'ringlar, mana o'ylab ko'raman, keyin Kengi darsda javobini ko'ramiz. Bu ham uyga vazifa bo'ladi. This is also will be your homework. I'll think about this uh, until next time and I'll explain this this problem for you. Okay, if you have some questions please ask. Uh, then then uh, Thank you very much. Uh, when will be the next lesson? Next lesson will be uh next the next day today is uh friday ah okay it will be on monday hello 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 Bir pəqə yazı var idim. O ziləyəm, mən şahazı mən testini təşədim o. Mən arasdan bir təkdə işləb ki, təvəm mən. Qoqəllərini o ziləyə işləb çıxışı ilə kərək. Çünki ilacı bağırı çə, mənə düşəm bəqə çə, ilacı bağırı çə, mən şəhə testlədən işləyilə. Kiyən, o şəhə qaysə birini işləməsi ilə, şunu səval qədər, Qolib, belgələb qoyilə, mən gəsə mənlə soru isləyə ki, yəngi dərslədə. Mən üçün dəramə, işləmə gəm məsələ yəmə. Mən orgətkən bələn sələ orgən olmə isləyə, sələ o ziyilə işləşi ilə kəri məsələ. Şündə orgən olə sələ. Yadlə varış mümkün, mənə mən işləb ki, təvrəmə, işləb ki, təvrəmə, sələ Şu işlənişi yadla varışı ilə mümkün, ləkən o faydalı yeməzdi boyunma, o əsi ilədən çıxıq etədi. Yaxşısı, o zilə mən şu məsələlərini alıb işləb, məbər işləb çıxıqaylə yaxşı, yaxşı rağ. Çünki bu, tez işlənədə gən məsələlə, tez-tez işləb ki, təvrələdi. Bir mint, iki mint də işləsə bolədi bu tezlərini. Əgər teoriyanı bilsə ilə. Teoriyanı təkrarlaş üçün, o şə Kitabdan, demək, kitab var, didaktikada kitab var və videolarım var. Şələgə xarəsə ilə bələdi. Əgər savallə yox olsa, bugün tüketəmiz. Kəngi dərs keçə xayr, etibarilə üçün rəxmət. Thank you for your attention. See you next time.